This is my 2008 Vespa PX125. Today is its last day with a petrol engine in it, as I'm going to start the process of re removing it and preparing to convert it to an electric vehicle. I'll be using the Retrospective Scooters EV conversion kit. And um, for this initial step of getting rid of the engine, I'm going to be following one of their videos as well on how to remove an engine from a PX125. I'll put the link in the description below. So let's get stuck in. in. preparation for this, I removed the mirrors, the windscreen, I also siphoned off all the fuel and put it in my car and also just ran it to get any excess fuel out. Also shut the fuel off at the petcock valve. I just removed the sides and put on some protective foam on the side just to protect it because I am going to lean this over on its side. I don't have a proper scooter lift. I'm just doing this in my very, very small garage. So, so first step is to remove the cover over the carb and air cleaner. I've just removed the cover and move this line here. And I'll need to take this screw out and just disconnect anything else that's run into that, including these throttle cables, choke cables, things like that, because I'm not going to need them anymore. And now I've disconnected the cables, air intake tube, the oil injection tube, and taking the, top, the air cleaner off. Now I'm going to tackle the disconnecting the wiring back here, which involves taking the screw out and just disconnecting everything. So the wiring has all been disconnected and the next step is to, to loosen the engine bolt <clears throat> which is behind here. So I'm going to take the spare tire off as well as the battery. Spare tire, battery, battery holder all removed. So I've got clear access to the engine bolt. It's a 22 mil socket. Should do it. And a lot of torque. So it actually wasn't too bad. It's loose. So I'm going to loosen this up. And again, following the instructions from Retrospective Scooters, I'm just going to get it out to where it's beyond the thread. I'm going to whack it with a hammer just to get the bolt loose. The engine bolt is now knocked in a bit. And now I need to undo the rear suspension bolt, which is back here. And get that loose. So the rear suspension bolt is has been loosened and pulled out a little bit. It's a 17 mil bolt head and a 13 mil nut on the back side, which I said kind of find out by trial and error. Next up is to lay this over on its side, ideally without damaging anything, and then you can remove the engine bolt. Okay, laying the bike over uh, without damaging anything, which is great. I've already cut the rear brake cable and the clutch cable. Now I just need to get to the gear selector cables here. There's also a little bracket holding the cable in there, which I'll have to remove. And to tackle the suspension and engine bolts. Okay. All cables disconnected. So I just need to pry or really pull that bolt up. And then pull that one out, their suspension, and then should be good to go. And that wasn't too bad at all. Just need to use my vice grips to kind of ease that one out. And the rear suspension bolt came up very easy. That is not the stock rear coilover shock. So that's probably why uh, it wasn't that difficult, to be honest. Okay, one last step before I pull the engine free, just to cut the fuel line back here. Um, I don't expect much to come out of it since I already siphoned all the fuel off and ran it dry. And there we have it. We have the engine out, which is a great first step. Let's see it's over here. I'm just going to put the uh, air cleaner and carb cover back on. So I got the bike up back up on the stand. 
and I'm now going to start taking out the fuel tank and the seat and just start trying to get rid of the cables, wiring, everything like that. Okay, seat's off. That was just quite simple. Three 13 mil bolts here, 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 and then two of the 13 mil, mil bolts held, hold in the, the tank. And then you just have to disconnect what I assume is the fuel pump. And then you can see that this is already loose <clears throat> and ready to come out. So I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, the fuel tank is out. Came up fairly easy. Just need to snake the oil and uh, fuel line through as well. Now I've got a nice big cavity in here, uh, which I just need to start pulling cables out of. And um, obviously I'll try to clean that up as well before I start putting anything else back in. Also need to disconnect <clears throat> all the cabling and wires here. Okay, so all the cables and relays and everything that were around near the battery have been removed and fished through into here. I'll have to chase them later. The next step will be to start dismantling uh, up top here. So I can start pulling some stuff through. I've already pulled the clutch cable through and tightened the screw and nut here to keep the clutch uh, lever stiff since there's no more tension on it. Okay, so off camera, I've started doing more of the stripping of all the parts. The tail light came off, comes off very easy. A couple screws there, pulled the wiring harness through. And then I also took off the top the headset. This was pretty easy. There's four screws holding in, and then you have to unclip the speedometer cable and undo that connector. And then finally the horn cast, took that off as well. Um, two screws back in the glove box area, and then also one screw hidden behind the uh, Piaggio logo, which comes off actually pretty easily. And... So I still have to remove some more cables and um, get it ready for the new wiring harness. Okay, I've got all the wires, the old wiring harness pulled out. I did, I'll probably just chop this off later. I don't think I need this anymore since the key ignition is no longer gonna turn the bike on. I do have left the uh, wires going through the grommets into for the turn signals. So I'm just going to probably reuse them, but for now they can stay. This wire here, not really sure what it does, so I'll leave that for now. And this wire was also from the, the brake lever. Um, probably need to reuse that, not quite sure. And otherwise, it is stripped. I can finally start the process of putting it back together with the new bits. So I started doing a bit of prep work and I've already installed the DC horn into the horn cast, which was fairly easy. I did have to put a piece of foam underneath it just to get a bit of pressure. The old one, that bracket basically screwed into the top, but the new horn doesn't have that bolt coming out, so but that seems pretty snug. Um, started preparing the headlight. This kit includes a LED bulb to go in it. Unfortunately, the diameter of the bulb is about 32, 33 mil, and that doesn't fit. So I'm gonna take my Dremel. I'm going to enlarge this carefully and then obviously vacuum out all the plastic shavings and um, see if I can get that to fit without having to replace the headlight. Okay, a few minutes with the grinding bit on my Dremel and I've got that big enough now and the bulb fits so I can now reassemble that. Just another bit of wiring prep work. Um, the original indicators had ground wires that went to the body via ring connectors we just bolt in to back here um, i've now cut them both and soldered them together on both sides in preparation for the installation one of the small jobs i'm tackling this morning is locking 
the uh, left handlebar grip. So this turns normally uh, when you shift gears, but I'm not going to be shifting gears anymore. So just like locking up the clutch lever there, I'm basically drilling down into here, the light over there. And it's going to just drop a screw in there to stop this from rotating. And here's the screw through the handlebar, or at least through the sleeve here. And now this is locked in place. Obviously, before I did this, I put the rest of the cover back on, lined it up with you know, the handlebar where I wanted to have it. In my case, I wanted the neutral thing lined up with the indicator on the other side. And then just use some masking tape to hold it in place. And then I drilled. The um, outer bit here, the kind of sleeve, is actually quite easy to drill into. I was surprised. The inner um, I guess rod there, whatever you want to call it, was a lot harder. And it took a little bit longer because my battery died. So top tip, charge your batteries before you begin for the day. Okay, now I'm going to work on the rear brake cable. So first I had to take the rubber foot off the rear brake. And there are, this is held in by three bolts underneath. So over here, there we go. So two on the my near side and one on the far side. And the heads of the bolts are on top, so I need to, I need to hold them with a wrench. Or I'll use my socket on the bottom. And then my bench to make it a little bit easier. There's a little cotter pin. Just straighten the legs. So I'm still struggling with this cotter pin. And in the end, I cheated. I clipped the ends off, and I'll just figure I'll get another one somewhere. Can't be too difficult to find. But it's still biting me. This is nuts. This thing just does not want to come out. It's amazing how something so small can be so difficult. This is meant to be a simple 10 minute job. Try pushing it the other way, maybe that'll help. Yes! Oh, I hate those things. Now that's out. I'm going to bend this back, poke this through. Pins out and cable as well. Now, this is very thick cable. This is not like bicycle cable, brake cable, so, or the gear shift cable. So I'm going to use my bolt cutters. And that couldn't do it properly. Come on. Oh. There we go. Old brake cable out. Success. So I'm not going to finish this brake pedal until I get a new cotter pin, which is very annoying. But what I'm going to do, so the kit came with a new brake switch. So this obviously sends a signal to turn on the brake lights when the brake is depressed. It's normally compressed, and then when you press the brake pedal, it comes open. Um, I don't necessarily need to replace it, but I have the new switch, so I may as well. It's a 7 mil bolt, which is a bit unusual, but there's been a couple of 7 mil bolts in this thing. Okay. This should just pry right up. Yeah, it's got some years of gunk holding it down. A little rubber plate there. I'm just going to reuse. There's a nice new switch. And put the washer back in. And then just screw it down. And 
doesn't need to tighten massively. That's probably good enough. All right, and then I just the little blade connectors in there. So once I start doing the electrical wiring, just hook that up. Now with the new brake cable, it comes with the kit again. It's going to take the outer case out, and then I'm going to, or off rather, and I'm going to feed that through here. Actually, then back into the outer housing. cotter pin, the one that I destroyed. All right, so got a new cotter pin, a split pin from a local scooter garage. Very nice to give me one for free. And so I'll pop the pin back in through. Stick this through and all the way pull it through. All right, it's in, bend it over. And then cut the excess off. So that's done. So I could theoretically put this back in, but I'm going to wait until the wiring is the new wiring harness is in the bike so that I can plug into the new brake light switch 